another GCSE Economics video with me, Mr Goff, from mrgoff.com. Today's video will be focusing on the importance of price elasticity of supply to consumers and producers. Consumers are unlikely to calculate price elasticity of supply for themselves, but it can still affect them. If supply is inelastic, it may be hard to get hold of a product without paying a higher price if one can be obtained at all. An example of this would be tickets to major sporting events or concerts where the number of seats is limited and may not match the number of people who want to go. If supply is elastic, it should be easier for a consumer to get more of a product if they want it, but it may be harder to negotiate the price they pay for it. Passenger firms such as Uber generally tend to have elastic supply. This is due to factors such as having low barriers to entry and flexible working hours. For most producers, it makes sense to have a high price elasticity of supply so that they can take advantage of price rises. There are a number of ways firms can use to improve their price elasticity of supply. These include improved technology, spare capacity, improving shelf life, keeping a lot of stock on hand, and improving worker flexibility. If a firm can introduce new or improved technology, they can become more efficient. This means they can produce more in a shorter space of time and so can respond faster to rises in price. Having spare capacity means having the ability to increase production if you need to. Most factories do not operate at full capacity. They tend to aim for somewhere between 75% and 85% capacity. One reason for this is that if there is a problem in the production process, they can adjust without missing their shipment dates and upsetting customers. For some firms, it may mean having more staff available. For a bar, for instance, the more people they have working during a busy period, the more drinks they'll be able to sell. Producers try to design packaging that will help prevent damage to their products during transit and generally increase the shelf life of those products. Food producers often use additives to make their products last longer. If shelf life is improved, it's easier to store the product and have it ready to supply if prices increase. Keeping lots of additional stock on hand allows you to respond quickly to shifts in demand that will cause a rise in prices. However, it also requires additional space for the storage of these goods, and it may require additional workers to manage these stocks if there's a lot of them. If workers can be trained to perform multiple roles within an organisation, then delays because of absence can be reduced, and workers can be deployed in the areas that have the greatest current workload. So, we've said that it's generally important for most firms to increase their price elasticity of supply and looked at the ways they can do that. But when is it going to be less important for producers? Well, first it's important to consider that all of these methods to increase elasticity of supply have a financial cost. So, if the demand for a product does not really change, there's no real reason to spend money trying to improve your price elasticity of supply. Price elasticity of supply is also less important for a firm that can't really do anything to improve their elasticity of supply. If we consider a small independent cinema that has a set number of seats, to increase their elasticity of supply, they would need a completely new venue. If that's not within the means of the firm, then it's unlikely to happen and they're not really going to consider their price elasticity of supply or how to improve it. That brings us to the end of our look at the importance of price elasticity of supply to consumers and producers. I've been Mr Goff for mrgoff.com. I hope you'll join me again for another GCSE economics video. In the next video, we'll be looking at equilibrium, which ties together the two concepts of demand and supply. Bye for now.